Hi, I'm Amanda B. Johnson, and you are watching Dash Detailed. Discussions of the security of a given blockchain-based network generally revolve around various kinds of attacks and how resistant or non-resistant the network is to them. One such attack that could be carried out theoretically on any peer-to-peer -peer network is called a Sybil attack. The name comes from the book and later movie Sybil, which was about the real-life story of a woman who suffered from multiple personality disorder. The root of the attack, then, is when one person poses as multiple different identities online. So how does this apply to cryptocurrency, you may be wondering, where one person running multiple nodes is generally seen as an attaboy sort of thing? Thanks for supporting the network! Well, depending on the cryptocurrency you're talking about, one person running many, many nodes could do several different things. The first thing they could do is give a false impression about the version of the software that the majority of the network wants. They could, say, refuse to upgrade to a new version or push out their own upgrade of a new version, giving the impression that the majority of the network wants to go a certain way in development when really it's just one person. Another form a Sybil attack could take in coins which offer any level of privacy is the de-anonymization of transactions. And yet another form that the attack could take is the refusal to relay transactions to the rest of the network. So with these possible attack vectors, and probably more, how can we determine how resistant or non-resistant any given network is to them? Well, as with all human action, we can most successfully predict what someone is going to do or not do based upon its cost. For example, if I offered you an all-expenses-paid trip to Hawaii and time off your job to take it, you would probably start packing your bags tonight. Whereas if I offered you the same trip on the condition that you and your children and your children's children would be indebted for it for life, you would probably not take me up on it. In short, whether or not a person does something depends on whether it is profitable or costly for them, and how costly, if so. So the question we must ask ourselves is, what is the cost to civil attack any given blockchain network? Well, in every top cryptocurrency except Dash, the cost of spinning up a node on that network is about $5 a month. A motivated and wealthy attacker could spin up hundreds, thousands, or even tens of thousands of nodes over time at relatively little cost to them. Now, the same is true in Dash. Anyone can run a full node for roughly $5 a month, but the crucial difference is that those kinds of nodes in Dash don't get to do anything important or crucial. They don't get to participate in the anonymization process of private send, they don't get to participate in the security process of instant send, and they don't get to participate in the governance process of cryptographic voting. So how much does it cost to participate in the crucial processes of Dash? Well, at current prices, about $13,000 per node. That's because 1,000 Dash are required to run a masternode, and 1,000 Dash cost roughly $13,000 today. And how much of the Dash network would you control after spending this $13,000? One fortieth of one percent. But that's spare change to a wealthy and motivated attacker, you might say. And you would be right. So how much would someone have to spend in order to gain a majority of the network? Well, with roughly 4,000 current masternodes in existence, an outside attacker, in order to gain, say, a majority, would need to purchase an additional 4,000-ish nodes, which is literally impossible because that would require at least a supply of 8 million Dash, and there are less than 7 million. And even if there were enough Dash, any attempt to buy them all up would send the price so astronomically high that to the moon would become an understatement. So with an outside attack essentially infeasible, that leaves only one kind, an inside attack a Dash masternode operator or operators essentially breaking bad. What if someone owned 400 masternodes, or 10% of the network, and their chosen Sybil attack vector were 
Hey, the de-anonymization of an eight-round mixed private send transaction. Their chances of doing so? One millionth of one percent. But hey, let's get crazy. What if someone owned 800 masternodes, 20% of the network? Then what would their chances be to de-anonymize an eight-round mixed private send transaction? Less than 30 thousandths of a percent. So what would this quite nearly impossible Sybil attack cost our attacker? Oh, just $10.4 million worth of his own dash, as a crash in the price would surely follow the de-anonymization of a high security private send transaction. However, the collateral requirement to run a masternode is only one part of the Sybil attack protection. The other part is the potential future earnings of running a masternode, as they are paid the same amount as Dash's miners. And it's this bit of self-interest that Satoshi Nakamoto himself talked about in the Bitcoin white paper. Satoshi wrote, If a greedy attacker is able to assemble more CPU power than all the honest nodes, he would have to choose between using it to defraud people by stealing back his payments, or conducting any other type of attack, or using it to generate new coins. He ought to find it more profitable to play by the rules, such rules that favor him with more new coins than everyone else combined, than to undermine the system and the validity of his own wealth. In that quote, Satoshi is describing how Bitcoin's nodes would ideally work, but as we all know, nodes and miners are now different things in Bitcoin. Because masternodes both prove a stake in the network and are regularly paid from it, it is entirely accurate to say that Dash is more aligned with Satoshi's original security model than Bitcoin is. If you would like to learn more about security in Dash or any other aspect of Dash, really, I invite you to stop by either our subreddit at r pay or a even more hopping place is our Slack in Dash underscore chat. The invitation link for that is below. And this has been Dash Detailed. I'll see you next Wednesday. Welcome everybody, thank you so much for coming out. My name is Amanda B. Johnson. Uh, I am the host and the writer of a YouTube series, a weekly YouTube series called Dash Detailed. So now, now that we've kind of established how, how we operate, how it works, what we're doing, what is Dash Evolution and how does it work? Why, why should we all be interested in it? And thank you so much for having us. <laughs>